We got an early Christmas present this week with Eve Home releasing the first support for Apple's adaptive lighting feature. In this video, we're gonna dig in to see exactly how that works. Hey guys, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek, the channel. We bring you new smart home content every single week, uh, looking at Apple HomeKit, Amazon, Google, and whatever I find interesting. If you find that interesting, do me a favor, ring that bell below and subscribe uh, to be notified when new videos are posted. So first things first, I'm going to again say thank you to Eve Systems for sending me this LED strip. I've had it for quite a while already. They did give it to me, so I want you guys to know that. Uh, this is the gift that apparently keeps on giving in that. Earlier this week, we got a firmware update which now gives us support for adaptive lighting uh, in iOS 14. So what are you going to need to get this running? Well, there really are two components here. You're going to need to be in the Apple HomeKit camp with a home hub, so for automation, so Apple TV or HomePod. And the second is a supported device. So the Eve light strip with the new firmware is the first adaptive lighting device. You do need that firmware in there for this to work. So I am in love with light. I am in love with light, not just because of the fact that it's cool, you can do th nice things, colors, all these kind of projects. I am in love with light in that it is actually a health benefit for you, right? I believe strongly that the your smart home should improve your quality of life. And light is a way that you can do that, especially when you're able to use it to help work with your circadian rhythms, to help you get to sleep faster, help you to wake up, help to keep your body on a constant clock all year long, even though the world around you for those of us in northern countries, may not have exactly that same clock. So first, let's talk about why adaptive lighting. What is this? For those of you who have heard the term circadian lighting before, this is uh, something that uh, essentially our bodies want to be in time with the world around us. We want to be uh, know when it's light, it's dark, we want to sleep when it's dark, all these great things. Now more than ever, as we're spending more and more time inside, being able to get the right type of light at the right time of day is really important for your health. This governs a ton of systems internally, so uh, Apple doing this is a great thing. But one thing that is not so great is it appears to be magic right now. If you look at the uh, Apple support documentation here, you can see there's really not a lot of data on this. And I wanted to dig into it and figure out exactly what it was doing. So this is definitely a test that I have done on the Eve light strip. This may change in the future as we see this from other manufacturers. Uh, we know Hue is in beta right now. So once I get my hands on that, I'm going to rerun these tests and definitely release that information. So I had questions when Apple first announced this, and there are still questions that are outstanding in my head, which I just simply don't have answers to. Does it take into account my location? I don't know. Does it take into account the time of year when the sunrise is sunsetting? Can't tell you that yet. We've only had it for about a week. But here are the things that I can tell you. Let's dig into the data. So how did I grab this data? Well, the short version is Siri Shortcuts is a really cool tool if you dig into it. So I grabbed a five minute sample of the Eve light strip with the adaptive lighting feature turned on and I tracked that over the period of a couple of days. Now I did have some breaks in the data and you'll see that in the graphs, but essentially I think we've got a pretty good idea now of exactly what this is doing and how it's doing it. So let's dig into that. So first let's talk about what it's actually manipulating. So the first thing I want to point out uh, that I was really hoping for is the ability of the adaptive lighting to really come in, have that sun gradually come up in the morning, gradually set at night. Sad to say, it's not going to do that for us. There is no gradual dim or gradual uh, fade that I am seeing at least. In leaving this turned on over a couple of days, I have seen zero change in the brightness. As you can see in the chart shown here, um, the entire time that I was catching data points, the brightness never changed, which is an interesting thing. Um, hoping that in the future they'll, they'll potentially uh, enhance this because I really would like to have something that has the sun come up and then have the sun come down and have it uh, gradually dim at night. That would have been really a cool thing to see. So looking at the graph on the screen right now, it's pretty easy to see exactly how this is working. So starting at the left-hand side, you can see the temperature there is really high. This is late at night. That's when your Kelvin values are really, really low. So this is going to be a very warm, warm, warm white, right? So no blue lights, uh, exactly what you would expect it to be. And then as you go further on in the day, you can see that it starts to drop down there in the middle. The temperature really starts to cool down. This is where you get that cool blue light uh, around the 6500 Kelvin. It's approximately where I would expect this to be for uh, bright blue daylight. 
And then as your day goes on, you go past noon all the way up into the evening again, and you can see that those warm white glows, the, that temperature really starts to come back up, which is um, exactly what you would want it to do. Uh, eliminating the blue light, working with our circadian rhythms. Pretty simple to see exactly how this is working when you look at this graph. So the other thing to point out is the hue and the saturation are flipping at the bottom of the day. And as you can see on the brightness line, there is no change at all throughout this period. So what does this actually mean to you? Well, using the Home 4 Plus application, I put in the numbers for that high point of the warm and the low point of the cool, which are displayed on the screen for you right now. So you can see uh, the trend of how this is gonna go down over time, as well as what the colors actually are. The reality is I'd probably like to see them a little bit warmer at night. I would like to see it a little bit cooler during the day. That's just my preference, but hopefully Apple will give us that ability in the future. So one Easter egg pointed out to me that I wanted to include for you guys that I don't know much about yet is the ability to change the brightness and how that affects the Kelvin, the warmth color of the white coming out of the light bulb. This is a really interesting thing that Apple has done where if the bulb is in adaptive lighting mode, as you can see in the screen here, as I pull the brightness down, the warmth of the light bulb automatically goes into those uh, warm orangey glows, which is a really cool effect if you just want to get down, uh, lower the brightness, lower down into a candlelight kind of a atmosphere. So anyways, that's what I have. So what do I love about this? I love the fact that Apple is working to use technology to improve our quality of life, right? This is not just a, uh, I, I'm lazy and I want to turn my lights off. We're actually working with technology in support of our existing biology to help us get better sleep. Better sleep, sleep improves everything, right? So if we can really enhance our sleep, that enhances quality of life across the board in our, uh, our health, our mood, memory, all of those things, right? So that's pretty awesome. So now let's talk about what I don't love about the feature right now. The first thing I don't love about it is I don't understand why this needed firmware support. Um, that's a mystery to me. So what that means by extension is that not all vendors are going to support this. So congratulations to Eve, one of my favorite HomeKit vendors, and they're always, always, always right on the ball as far as pushing the limits of what they can do and supporting all the, the cool things that Apple HomeKit has to offer us. So what's next? I can't wait to get my hands on more adaptive lighting supported products. I'm hoping Philips Hue will release soon. There's word from other vendors coming down as well. And I'd love to see how this is consistently implemented across the board. So if there's anything I missed, any questions I didn't answer, do me a favor, put those in the comments below. I'll be happy to get to those as quickly as I can. I know there's a lot of data here, but hopefully this has given you an idea of how exactly Apple HomeKit adaptive lighting is going to work in your house. And right about now, YouTube should here or here be giving you videos that they think that you might be interested in watching next. See you guys soon.